Amen. Praise the good Lord. I love it. Yeah, she'll give me a message when I get home. <laughs> I'm arresting her for giving her, I tell her to hurry. <laughs> uh, John chapter 6 is what we're going to do. It. And the, if you stand, we'll have a word of prayer and then we'll, they'll read the text here. I'm real nervous, I guess, you'd call it. It sure is a privilege to let uh, for Brother Lawson to let me uh, uh, hold forth the words of life. That's what it is. It's life. You don't have life outside of this. I, I, I hope you know that. Amen. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the privilege you've let us gather here this evening, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for loving us. Thank you for a beautiful evening. Thank you, Lord, for the blood of Jesus that cleanses us from all sin. And thank you, Lord, for uh, the privilege, Lord, that we could get together and that we could talk about you and talk about uh, what you said in the book. And, Lord, we thank you, Lord, for loving us. And, Lord, I pray that you would uh, honor the word of God. I know you will. And I pray, Lord, that you would do what you'd want it to do, that you'd use me, Lord, I'm, and me be, let me be obedient. Let me try to tell, you, tell what you want me to tell. Because you first loved me, Lord. Thank you for all that you've done for me in my life. Uh, amen and amen. amen. So I'm in John chapter 6, uh, verse 38. For I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. And this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again, raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that every one which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. The Jews then murmured at him, because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. And they said, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it that he saith, I came down from heaven? And Jesus therefore answered and said unto them, Murmur not among yourselves. No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him and I will raise him up at the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall be all taught of God. Every man therefore that hath heard and hath learned of the Father cometh unto me. Not, man, not that any man hath seen the Father, save he which is of God. He, this, he hath seen the Father. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. I am that bread of life. Your fathers did eat manna in the wilderness and are dead. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Amen. You can be seated. Amen. I was going to talk in verse 51 about, uh, about I am the living bread. This is one of the I am's that Jesus speaks of here in John. Uh, other than... Uh, uh, in Moses, I am that I am. And this is the real I am here. And this is God in the flesh talking to these Jews here that are murmuring and complaining. Uh, they know Jesus. They knew him from their, his childhood, and they know a lot about him. So they're murmuring. They're saying, well, he don't know nothing. We've known him all of our life, and he's, uh, he, he's illegitimate. Right. He, we know his daddy, and he lived down there in that little place, and uh, he's always going around causing trouble trying to tell people that uh, they can have eternal life, everlasting life. Amen. And so they're, they're complaining. He's trying to tell them what this bread is. Uh, he uses a metaphor saying, I am the bread of life. I am the bread of life. Right. And that's what I'm going to try to tell you all tonight, that you need bread. Amen. You know, you can't live without bread. you got to have nourishment. You know, that's the sustenance, the substance that you live with. And you got to have that. And he said, I am the living bread which came down from heaven if any man eat of this bread. Now, first off, you've got to eat, you eat this bread before you get any help. You know, you've got to take it in. And if any man eat of this bread, it's a necessary act. That's what you have to have. You've got to take it in. And most people don't take in bread. They don't get the real bread. They, they, they get a little bit of uh, uh, crumbs, that, uh, crumbs that man has thrown in there to mess up their bread. It's stale. What they do have, it's stale. It's just a picture. It's just a story that's uh, they've took the power out of it. It hadn't got no spirit on it, and, and so they don't get no real bread. It's just uh, uh, just a, a, a formality. It's, they don't. So you have to have the necessary uh, act of eat of eating. 
Now, well, you can talk about the bread, and you can handle the bread and know how good it is, but you, you got to take it in. You know, you can, you can look at the bread, and you can know what all it, where it came from and how, the history of it and, and what it'll do for you. But if you don't take it in, you're just uh, speculating. You're just, you're just thinking, well, I've got it. But if you don't take it in and eat it, if you don't receive it, uh, you're going to be in the same old predicament you came in with. If you want the bread of life. And we want the bread of life. That's what we need. We, we don't need that other kind of bread. The regular bread do, do this to you. It'll make you wide and fat and wide and loud. That's all it does. The, re- <laughs> the kind of bread we put out today is not the kind of bread you need. The bread we need comes from there. And uh, I'm going to jump across this page here. I'm going to jump around a little bit because what I'm going to tell you, uh, we need. And whoever's listening needs to hear this. Um, verse 63 says, It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. Amen. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Amen, Amen. praise God. Amen. And that's what happens to you, friend. If you get born again, the spirit comes in and you'll say, What in the world am I thinking? Why did, what happened to me? Because you got to be a new creature, a whammo, right then, quick. It's amazing. It's amazing. If Jesus comes in, uh, it'll, it, you'll wonder how it, how, how it happened. Because it's, uh, it's, a, it's a supernatural work of God, that's what it is. And in second place, uh, you've got to feel the need of, of bread. you got to have, you get hungry. You know, if you get out there in the world and sin, drink, whatever you do as a sinner, you know, you'll find your need if you sin to get under conviction. And if, if you get a little bit of word someplace, God will send you some word, and you'll, you'll get under conviction, and you'll feel your need for it. You need the bread. You need to run to where you can get the bread because it, you need it. Your body needs it. Well, you got to have it. And then the third place, it needs to be appropriated and be received. You know, uh, you, there may be a lot of bread out there. The, the table may be spread and loaded with all these delicacies. And um, uh, you have a large portion on your plate, but not until you begin to eat do you make it on your own. If you, till you get it, till you receive it, you can't go. You can't go, get out there until you receive that bread. You can't get out here in the world if you don't get some bread, the real bread, because uh, it, it's rough out there. I'm telling you, it's it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God, especially if you're a lost man. The devil's trying to kill you. So run to Jesus while you can. And so you have to be appropriated for the bread. It, has to, it supplies your health and your strength. And it's, uh, uh, you can see it's uh, being attractive, a perfect life. And you can see him in the cross. But you still have to appropriate it. You still have to, you can see Jesus. You can see him on the cross. And you can see everything that, and, and the preacher can tell you all about Jesus going to the cross and, and how he, he was, the Bible says his visage, his visage was marred, whatever he looked like. He didn't even look human. Amen. His visage was so marred. And that's what, it, they couldn't even tell he was Jesus. Amen. That's how bad he was, how he was bludgeoned before the cross even. And so you don't need to get out there. Uh, so you're going to have to have the Jesus. Jesus, uh, the bread of life to get by. And it's a personal act. Nobody can do it for you except hearing. So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So you need to hear the word of God. And uh, some places don't have the word of God. They have a uh, form of godliness but denying the power of all. They have a uh, book out there but it, it doesn't tell you that uh, sinners go to hell. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. And so you're going to have to have it took care of, and the only way you can take care of, get it taken care of, is through Jesus. And he'll take your sin. You can cast all your burden of care upon him, for he careth for you, Peter said. And so uh, you can do that today. You can repent. As the preacher was trying to tell you this morning, it comes by repentance. Except you repent, ye shall all likewise perish. And that's how you get saved. You repent of your sins and come to, and repentance is acknowledging to Jesus, the Lord Jesus, that you're a sinner and agreeing with him what he already knows about you. He knows you anyhow, so you just as well fess up 
confess him and tell him that you're a sinner and all the sins you do. And he'll forgive you of them because he loves you. And that's what he wants you to do, is to come to him because he loves you. And that's why he took your place on the cross. The Bible says uh, to obey is better than sacrifice. You know, that's true, ain't it? I mean, how, how would you want to live your whole life and, and die and go to hell without, without uh, and knowing that you were a sinner and, and it never, nothing in your life you ever did to, and you never had peace of God that passes all understanding. You never received that. I mean, I mean, you're just uh, in the world. You're just, uh, it would be worse if a man had ever been born. The Bible speaks of it in there. Jesus talks about that. Because it's all in vain. Amen. And it's his good pleasure that he's created us and let us be what we want to be. Amen. And it's, it's his good will. He wants, to, he wants to let you do what you want to do. Because he loves you. He, he'll let you do it. And uh, so what, what, what is your treasure? What kind of, have you got a treasure that you're laying up here on earth? But, you know, you know the Bible says over here in Matthew, it says, chapter 6, he says, uh, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Amen. And that's true. If your heart's in Jesus and Jesus is in you, and give yourself to Jesus. And... Um, Cast all these other things away and uh, let us uh, run, run with patience the race that is set for us. I mean, it's no easy run. We know that uh, people's going to come against you because the devil hates you talking about Jesus. The devil don't like it since you got saved. And, uh, but we have to be strong in the Lord. He's the loser. And uh, we talked about how can... Uh, the, the world will send them a strong delusion, but the preacher reached that, read that, read that uh, uh, passage this morning in 2 Thessalonians 2.10, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Don't you find that that's the world is what they're doing today? They love it. The more, the better. The more uh, battles they can come up with, the more places they can go and run and uh, try to change something that God has made. Uh, we're perverted. We live in a perverse generation. Amen. Generation of vipers. Amen. I mean, all the prophets and all the, the Bible uh, disciples talked about it. And he asked them, will you also go away? Yeah, they did. A lot of them did. Uh, and and uh, they'll go away with you if you can start telling the truth. People don't like the truth. That, uh, that they're sinners. Right. And uh, there's none doeth good and sinneth not. There's a lot of people think they're doing, they're doing works. A lot of people do works, but it's not in works. I mean, you can, you can uh, give to all kinds of organizations, but the Bible says it's not works of righteousness, which we have done, but it's according to his mercy he saved us by the washing of the regeneration of the Holy Ghost, which he shed on us abundantly through the Lord Jesus Christ. So we're going to have to have Jesus. Amen. That's the only hope you got in this world. And that's the only hope you're going to have when you leave. Amen. And uh, I want to uh, give you another instance here of how God takes care of us. Hang on a second. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings. And the word which he, ye hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. These things have I spoken unto you, being yet present with you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I leave, you, I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, Neither let it be afraid. So he sent the comforter. He even left the comforter here. And that's what happens when you get under conviction. 
the comforter comes and he says, uh, uh, Bill, Joe, uh, uh, whatever your name is, uh, I went to the cross for you, and why are you doing that to me? Why did you go to that place? I live inside of you. Why, why did you take me into that place there? You don't need to be going into that place. It's to make you a sinner. You're supposed to be holy now because you don't belong here. You're a new creature in Christ. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So you don't need to take me in there no more. The comforter's trying to tell you. And if the comforter comes in, he'll tell you before you even start that way. Because he constrains you. It's because the love of God constrains you. He pulls the reins back and says, Whoa, boy, you don't belong there. You don't belong there no more. You used to do that, but, you know, they don't, they don't know you no more anyhow. I mean, they won't even speak to you no more. The people that used to love you down there, the pool hall or wherever, they don't like you no more. Because they done left. You all went crazy. He went crazy. He reads the Bible all the time. He's a nut. <laughs> But they don't know that it, that's the only thing that's going to happen when it's over with. For it is appointed unto man wants to die, and after this, the judgment. It's bad news, friend, if you don't have Jesus. And that's the truth. I'm just telling you because he loves us. And he wants you to get saved. Today's the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. And you can get accepted up there at the house where you live. Or wherever you're at. He'll accept you in the car going home. Because he loves you. He's everywhere. God is everywhere. Amen. That's another good thing about it. You can just say, Lord, forgive me. You don't have to wait and write it down or nothing. I mean, right. you remember it's going anyhow. I mean, when you're old as I am. <laughs> old age is not a good, pretty picture. <laughs> a guy told me the other day, it's like a roll of toilet paper. It gets faster as it goes down to the end. <laughs> so it sounds like it's not good. Preacher's up to three score of ten, and I'm trying to catch him. But I love it, and I'm glad I got saved. I was an old man when I got saved. But you know what? He gave me all. He, he, I got a lot more in this old ticker in my head, my brain. There's a lot more in there. There is. He let me speak all this tonight. My wife knows how I speak a lot of times. She calms me down. And God gave me that woman there. 48 years I've been with her. That's the first woman I've had. That's my first one. Amen. Yes, sir. God's good. <laughs> I say it's the first argument I went through or nothing. And you know what I mean? I don't argue. I say, yes, ma'am. <laughs> and go to the other end of the house. You got to. If at all possible, live at peace with all men. Is that right, brother? And I love all you guys. It's wonderful to be in a place that loves to hear the truth and know that truth will make them free. And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Well, I was going to try to uh, get all this different kinds of bread going together. And I thought about the little swan sunbeam lady that lived over there, and the, she hung out over on Henley Street. You'd be old enough to hear to see that, preacher. You remember when the swans... Sunbeam lady, uh, swan sunbeam bread. They had a big outdoor advertising sign. The little lady swung across through there. Yeah, she. They came up with that butter whip sunbeam bread. You remember that? Yes, sir. Well, I was going to make an analogy with the Southern Baptist Church, <laughs> saying it was trying to do everything decently and in order, but I don't know if that would work or not. They bragged that it didn't have no holes in it. You know, better whip sunbeam bread. And then, then they went to the enriched bread. You know what I'm saying? That's that ASV and the NIV. They tried to enrich the bread. That's what happened. They tried to enrich it, but all they come up with was the worst book and they tried to print to start with. It just keeps getting worse. Then they had this, uh, <laughs> then they had this fortified bread. It was fancy and fluffy. That's the ones that had the big screen TV. It was yeah. fancy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you could have everybody wanted there on the big screen. But now, but, uh, but the Lord said over here in verse 32 of this same chapter, he said, Then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, that means truly, truly, 
I say unto you, Moses gave you not that bread from heaven, but my Father giveth you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. And so we find out right there that Jesus is the true bread. And don't let nobody give you no bad bread. That's right. There's a lot of big things happening. Don't get caught on the FEMA train. They're going to try to run, uh, run us in. They're going to try to stop us. But we're more than conquerors through him that loved us. And God's going to take care of them because he loves us. And he's going to honor what we do because we stand, we're stand. we being steadfast and unmovable. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. And that's what we need to do is, is to be a better soldier. Be an ambassador and a better soldier. And help me to be one too. I need to. I'm preaching my own message here tonight. The lot I need to get. And I preached that most of it's mine. And he gave that to me because I need it. And I appreciate it. And if anybody needs to come down here and talk to Jesus, talk to the Lord Jesus, you come on down here. Uh, the altar's open, and if God will speak to your heart, you come and talk to him. And I, that would be all I would have to say is to keep, keep on with Jesus. Amen. Keep on. Run to Jesus. When you get in trouble, run to Jesus. He's your helper. Amen. Brother Lawson, Jim. Appreciate it.